people have claimed to get the colour back in their hair by drinking a lot of green drinks. Now what green drinks contain is a lot of minerals. And when you consider what we talked about this afternoon, that the mineral content of the soil is about 50% less what it was 50 years ago, that a lot of the foods today have less minerals in them. You see, in Australia, the soil is ju the plants are just put in year after year after year. What should happen is when a crop comes out of the ground, then the soil should be fed with rich compost because every time a crop is in the ground it's taking nutrients out and if you don't replace the nutrients then the next crop that's grown there is going to be nutrient deficient so that makes sense doesn't it so really looking at agriculture is the only way to change the farming habits and unfortunately because there's big dollars made in big industry and growing lots of stuff and super phosphate um, I don't know how that will ever turn around but you can do the best you can you can grow as much as you can you can buy the best quality that you can and you can have green drinks so how do you have green drinks well you can buy chlorophyll you can buy green barley powder you can buy wheatgrass powder you can buy super greens so basically taking that three times a day making sure you have lots of greens in your in your daily salad hello I'm Barbara O'Neill today we're tackling a topic that's important for many of us combating hair loss through diet if you're struggling with thinning hair or hair loss the right foods can play a significant role in supporting healthy hair growth recent studies have shown that certain nutrients are essential for maintaining strong healthy hair. In this lecture, we'll explore which foods are rich in these nutrients and how they can help you strengthen your hair and promote growth. So stay tuned as we dive into practical dietary tips and discover how you can use food to support your hair health. Let's first uncover the causes of hair loss. Hair loss or alopecia is a problem that I often get asked about what can we do for hair loss? How can we grow new hair? Well, first of all, we have to put the detective hat on and find out why there is hair loss. So what would be some of the most common causes of hair loss? Well, one friend of mine, she always dyed her hair. Her hair, she was showing gray hair from a very early age. And so from about the age of uh, 30, she began to dye her hair. Now you can get a hair dye made of henna and henna is a plant that can dye your hair and that is not toxic but my friend did not use that one she used a chemical hair dye and little by little it was killing off her her uh, follicles where the hair grows so it can be chemicals on the hair another friend of mine did not like her very curly hair and so all her life from probably about her late teens right up until her 50s she straightened her hair now the solutions that they use to straighten the hair or for people with straight hair that want curly hair it is a very toxic chemical so what happens is if a person wants to straighten their hair they would what the hairdresser does is pull the hair over great big rods like that and so the the curly hair that's this curly of course gets pulled over them and that straightens it but if a person's got straight hair and they want curly hair well the rods are that big and they stretch the hair around and around and around so whether it's to straighten the hair or whether it's to curl the hair they put this toxic solution on it's a strong chemical and what it does is it breaks all the little joins in the hair because hair has all these little joins like this so what it does is it breaks the joins breaks the joins and then it's molded of course around either there for the curl or there for the straight and then when all of those little bonds are broken and it's been stretched into a certain shape they rinse off that chemical and then they put another chemical on 
to set it. So to set the bonds together and then that sets the hair structure as straight or as curly. So basically that's how the hair is permed. When I first left school at the age of 16, I, did, I was a hairdresser for about four years and we used to do a lot of perms. And that's how they perm hair, whether it be straight or whether it be curly. But when those chemicals are constantly going on the hair, little by little, they kill the hair follicles. I have also seen in some areas where people braid their hair really, really tightly. You'll often see that they've got hair loss around here where you've got that weight. You've got that constant weight on the, on the hair, which can really just keep pulling the hair out. And then the, then the follicles are damaged. So no matter how it happens, we must stop what is causing the damage. That's the first one. If you don't turn the tap off, you're still mopping up in the other corner. Sometimes I see hair loss in a hormonal imbalance. So if it's a hormonal imbalance, then the hormones must be balanced back again. And that's where the Anna's Wild Yam Cream. I have a presentation on balancing the hormones and you can Google my name and watch that. And it will show you that the Anna's Wild Yam Cream is a cream that when it's regularly applied twice a day, it balances those hormones back and can cause that hair to grow back again. Sometimes high stress, if someone goes through a very stressful situation, one of the reactions can be hair loss. So what can you do to bring it back again? Ah, there's one more that I didn't mention and that's anemia. If a person is anemic, it can cause hair loss. So what's anemic? Anemic means very low iron in the blood. And anemia can be caused because of heavy blood loss at period time. A lot of women suffer from that and that can cause anemia and the anemia can cause the hair loss. To delve deeper into the topic of hair loss, let's talk about a few more factors that could be causing the issue and what you can do about them. One of the things that's often overlooked when it comes to hair loss is nutrition. Your hair needs the right nutrients to grow and stay strong. If you're not getting enough vitamins and minerals like iron, zinc, vitamin D and B vitamins, it can lead to thinning hair. For example, if your diet is low in protein, your hair might weaken since it's mainly made of a protein called keratin. To keep your hair healthy, make sure you're eating a balanced diet that includes foods like eggs, nuts, leafy greens and lean meats. Another culprit behind hair loss is the overuse of heat styling tools. Using blow dryers, flat irons and curling irons too often can damage your hair, making it brittle and more likely to break. The heat can dry out your hair, causing it to lose moisture and become fragile. To avoid this, try to limit how often you use these tools. When you do use them, apply a heat protectant spray and opt for lower heat settings. Letting your hair air dry whenever you can is another good way to protect it. Stress is another big factor. If you're going through a lot of physical or emotional stress, it can trigger a condition called telogen effluvium, where your hair follicles go into a resting phase, causing your hair to shed more than usual. This might happen after a surgery, illness, or even a really stressful life event. To help with this, focus on managing your stress through regular exercise, meditation, and getting enough sleep. Reducing stress can help create a better environment for your hair to grow back. Hormonal changes can also play a role, especially in women. Conditions like polycystic ovary syndrome, menopause, or even the hormonal shifts after having a baby can mess with your hair's growth cycle. If you think hormones might be the issue, it's a good idea to talk to a healthcare provider who can help you find the right treatment, whether that's medication, lifestyle changes, or something natural like Anna's Wild Yam Cream. Finally, don't forget about environmental factors like pollution and the quality of the water you're washing your hair with. Hard water, which is full of minerals like calcium and magnesium, can leave buildup on your scalp, making it irritated and possibly leading to hair loss. Pollution can also clog your hair follicles, which isn't good for growth. Using a clarifying shampoo once a week can help get rid of any residue and keep your scalp healthy. Now let's explore the foods that can help you combat hair loss. 
and nourishment, we need to be having a high fiber diet, high fiber. We also need to be having generous amounts of protein. Here's your legumes, your nuts, your seeds. So generous proteins. Proteins are the building blocks of the body and healthy fats. So there's your nuts, your seeds, your avocados, coconut, coconut and olive oil. Myself, I prefer the taste of the olive oil. We had a Fijian cook for a while and they preferred the taste of the coconut oil. So whatever your preference is. It's a very concentrated food. You do not need very much, just a little bit, but it certainly can make food taste nice. We had big baked potatoes here yesterday. I opened my baked potato and I said to the cook, have you got a bit of olive oil there? Very nice to sprinkle a little olive oil in there and Celtic salt. Oh, it makes potatoes very nice. So nourishment is, ne is necessary. When addressing hair loss, the role of nutrition cannot be overstated and incorporating specific foods into your diet can make a significant difference. To start, foods rich in protein are fundamental since hair is primarily composed of a protein called keratin, including high quality protein sources such as lean meats, fish, eggs and plant-based options like legumes, nuts and seeds can help strengthen hair and promote growth. For instance, salmon is not only rich in protein, but also provides essential omega-3 fatty acids, which nourish the hair follicles and support scalp health. Similarly, eggs are packed with biotin, a B vitamin crucial for hair growth and overall scalp health. Nuts like almonds and walnuts are excellent sources of both protein and healthy fats, which can enhance hair quality and shine. In addition to proteins, vitamins and minerals play a crucial role in maintaining healthy hair. Vitamin A, found in foods such as sweet potatoes, carrots and spinach, helps in the production of sebum, which keeps the scalp moisturised and healthy. Vitamin C, present in citrus fruits, strawberries and bell peppers, aids in collagen production, a protein that strengthens hair and reduces breakage, Iron is another essential mineral for hair health and incorporating iron rich foods like lean red meat, spinach and lentils can help prevent hair loss related to iron deficiency. Zinc is vital for hair growth and repair and sources like pumpkin seeds, chickpeas and beef can help maintain adequate levels. Omega-3 fatty acids found in fatty fish like mackerel and sardines, as well as flax seeds and chia seeds, are important for keeping the scalp hydrated and reducing inflammation that can lead to hair loss. These healthy fats also contribute to overall hair strength and shine. Similarly, incorporating foods high in antioxidants, such as berries and green tea, can protect hair follicles from damage caused by free radicals, thereby promoting healthier hair growth. Moreover, incorporating whole grains like quinoa, brown rice and oats into your diet can support hair health by providing a steady release of energy and essential nutrients. Whole grains are rich in B vitamins, which are known to improve hair health and combat stress-related hair loss. Staying hydrated is also crucial, so drinking plenty of water and consuming hydrating foods like cucumbers and watermelon helps maintain the moisture balance of the scalp and supports overall hair vitality. It's important to remember that a balanced diet alone may not resolve all issues related to hair loss, as factors such as genetics, stress, and hormonal imbalances also play a role. However, ensuring that you get a diverse range of nutrients from your diet can certainly contribute to stronger, healthier hair. For those who may not get enough nutrients through food alone, supplements such as biotin, collagen, and specific vitamins may also be beneficial, but it's always best to consult with a healthcare provider before starting any new supplements. Now let's dive into some remedies to enhance the scalp health. But what can you do to the scalp to encourage the hair to grow again? You can make a mix that you can put on your hair. And this mix is, let's, let's make up the mix. So half a cup of coconut oil and half a cup of castor oil. Castor oil is a very thick oil. But castor oil 
penetrates deeper than any other oil. So when that is put onto the scalp, it penetrates even deeper. Coconut oil is a very nourishing oil. It's an antifungal oil, antibacterial oil. But what you also can put with that, so now you've got a cup of oil there. To that cup of oil, you can add 10 drops of rosemary essential oil. Rosemary is a herb that's a specific for the scalp. Rosemary essential oil. So you could make up this mix in a jar and mix it very, very well. And maybe once a week, you, you massage it into the scalp. Your hair will be very oily, of course, but you massage it into the scalp. Just even the massaging into the scalp stimulates blood supply to the hair follicles. That castor oil penetrates very deep and wherever it penetrates, it can revive life into that area. And the coconut also is a very nourishing oil and the rosemary essential oil stimulates. Every herb stimulates different parts of the body and this rosemary herb is a specific for the scalp. The massaging, so leave it in as much as you can. Maybe you choose a Sunday when you may be going to be home all day. And at the end of the day you wash out now you might need to put shampoo on a couple of times to get all that oil out. Just use a little bit of hot water and then, and then a nice amount of shampoo. And if it's still a little bit greasy, maybe shampoo it again. Another effective remedy for improving scalp health is using apple cider vinegar. It acts as a natural exfoliant that helps remove dead skin cells and excess oil from the scalp, balancing its pH levels and promoting a healthier environment for hair growth. To use it, dilute two to three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar with one cup of water and apply the mixture to your scalp after shampooing. Massage it in for a few minutes before rinsing it out. Additionally, Aloe vera is known for its soothing and moisturizing properties. Applying fresh aloe vera gel directly to the scalp can help alleviate dryness and reduce irritation. Simply scoop out the gel from an aloe vera leaf, apply it to your scalp and leave it on for about 30 minutes before washing it off. Another beneficial remedy is to use essential oils like peppermint or tea tree oil. Peppermint oil has been shown to stimulate blood flow to the scalp, promoting hair growth, while tea tree oil has antifungal and antibacterial properties that can help combat dandruff and other scalp issues. Mix a few drops of either oil with a carrier oil, such as jojoba or olive oil, and massage it into your scalp. Leave it on for at least 20 minutes before washing it out. Incorporating a balanced diet rich in vitamins and minerals such as zinc, iron and vitamins A and E can also support overall scalp health and hair growth. Staying hydrated by drinking plenty of water throughout the day is crucial as well as it helps maintain moisture levels in the scalp and hair. Now what about shampoos? There's something that you must keep right away from and it's called sodium laurel sulfate. Sodium laurel sulfate is what's in many shampoos. And sodium laurel sulfate kills the hair follicles. So it's important to take a magnifying glass into the shop and read the labels. In places like Whole Foods, Sprouts, Trader Joe's, where they have a lot of uh, health foods, and they have a lot of supplements, and they have a more healthier brand of products. So have a look for a shampoo that has no, so we've got to make sure you realize no sodium laurel sulfate because the sodium laurel sulfate is a chemical that causes the foaming of the shampoo and that sodium laurel sulfate has the ability to kill the hair follicles in the scalp. So please keep away from that. You can get some very nice coconut based shampoos. Coconut is very nourishing to the scalp. What's also important, here are some additions to the treatment. So additions to using this once a week. I mean, if you're home a lot, you might even do it twice a week. Exercise. What exercise does is it increases the circulation of the blood to the extremities and the scalp is considered an extremity. So exercise daily, especially the high intensity interval training. 
the high intensity interval training because of the periods of very high intensity that really gets the blood moving out to the extremities. Thanks for watching. I hope you found these dietary tips helpful for managing hair loss and promoting healthy hair growth. Incorporating these nutrient rich foods into your diet can make a real difference. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tips on health and wellness. Feel free to share your thoughts or ask questions in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next video.